Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Yes, Let's Master English 61. It's time. My name is Coach Shane. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Yeah, I, I enjoy making it. I hope that you enjoy listening to it. That's great. Uh, today we've got a great podcast, a very interesting news story, some wonderful questions, and of course, great answers. In our book club, we're talking about Habit 3, Put First Things First. This is from the audiobook, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You can get the audiobook for free, www.audibletrial, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E, trial, T-R-I-A-L, audibletrial.com slash L-M-E, the audiobook, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Today, we'll be talking about Habit 3, so I look forward to that. Of course, we got Country Shane and the Logo Competition. All right, so we have a logo. Uh, many of you have seen my logo, LME, Let's Master English. It's blue and gold, kind of a yellow. I like it, but some people say we might want to change it. So there's a logo competition, and it's running through this month, through the month of February. Right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people have submitted designs, their ideas on what the Let's Master English logo might uh, look like. Some great ideas, some very interesting ideas. So we still have a couple weeks. If you have an idea for Let's Master English, maybe changing our logo, well, send us the design. You might win. If we choose one of your designs, that winner will receive a prize, a cash prize of $100. Of course, you have to give us the logo. <laughs> um, and if you don't want the cash, you can get classes. We'll give uh, DDM VIP or Perf Live. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. So uh, it's a great opportunity if you're a designer, if you have an idea about Let's Master English and what you think the logo should be. Please, uh, Try out. The email for the logo is logo at letsmasterenglish.com. Logo, L O G O, at letsmasterenglish.com. The podcast email is podcast at letsmasterenglish.com. The free lessons, letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Everything's really, really simple, right? I think so. Okay, enough chit chat. Let's light this candle. Where education and entertainment come together. L -l -l Let's master English. Do it. Watch what you say. Are you a bore? Maybe. Have you ever had a conversation with a boring person? <laughs> sure. What if there was a way that people could find out how they were doing in their conversational skills real time? Talking too much? Zap. Too boring? Zap. MIT has developed a prototype conversational coach that takes the form of a wearable you can strap to your wrist. A watch that will watch your every word. Sounds like Kit. Right, Kit? Right? There's no reason for increased volume. I am scanning your interrogatives quite satisfactorily. Hey, that was Kit, right? So, was it an easy story or a difficult story? Yeah, some people say it's pretty tough. Let me read it again. Let me go slow here. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Be careful of what you say. Are you a bore? B-O-R-E. Are you a bore? Maybe. Have you ever had a conversation with a boring person? Yeah. Sure, sure. What if there was a way 
that people could find out how they were doing in their conversational skills real time. What if, hmm, maybe you're talking too much, zap, too boring, zap. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT has developed a prototype conversational coach that takes the form of a wearable you can strap to your wrist. A watch that will watch your every word. Sounds like Kit. Right, Kit? Right? And then we hear Kit's voice. Kit says, there's no reason for increased volume. I am scanning your interrogatives quite satisfactorily. Okay, boy, this is really tough. This is a tough one. So let me go ahead and explain slowly. This is a great news story. This news story is really interesting. It's about technology that will help you be a better talker. It will give you better communication skills. It's a conversation coach to help you in your coach and your communications. So back to the title, watch what you say. So in America, watch what you do, watch what you say, watch where you go. What that means is be careful. Be careful of what you do. Be careful of what you say. Be careful of where you go. So watch what you say. Be careful of what you say. When I see the title, that's what I understand. Now, the first sentence. Are you a bore? B-O-R-E. A bore is a boring person. A boring person. Are you a bore? Are you a person that's boring? Hi. My name is Shane. What's your name? Oh. <gasps> yeah, that's that sounds like a really boring person. Are are you a little bit? Are you a bore? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, some people are they know. Uh, that's good. Are you a bore? Have you ever had a conversation with a boring person? <gasps> oh my god. Sure, of course. We have all had a conversation with a boring person, right? The worst is a boring person who has bad breath. Hi. <laughs> Please get out of here, man. Come on, go. Yeah, okay, anyway, so yeah, we have all had this situation. What if there was a way, grammatically there were a way, that people could find out how they were doing in their conversational skills real time. So, you know, we have conversations. And for most of us, we think we're okay. We're normal. We're not too boring. But, you know, sometimes we might be boring. Or maybe we're too sad in our conversation. Or maybe we're too excited in our conversation. What if there was a way? What if there was a method? Maybe there's some software, like a smartphone app. What if there was some technology that could tell us right now how my conversation is going? Shane, you're very interesting. Shane, you are boring. Oh, that would be good. That would be good technology, right? If there was a technology that could tell me how my conversation ability was, I would like that. That would be good. And that's the question. So again, what if there was a way, there was a method that people could find out, that people could discover how they were doing in their conversational skills real time? Real time. R-E-A-L dash T-I-M-E, real time, right now, as it is happening, as something is happening, real time, real time. Talking too much? If you're talking too much, zap, zap, Z-A-P. That's the sound for an electric 
shock. So, mm, bzz, ah, zap. So if you're having a conversation and you're talking too much, bzz, suddenly you get an electronic shock and then you know, whoop, I need to shut up. Good technology. Too boring? Are you being too boring? Hi, my name is... Whoa, ow. Oh, I'm being too boring. Zap. I get another electric shock. That would be great technology. MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of the United States' most famous technology universities. MIT has developed... So they created something, they did something. A prototype, a prototype, P-R-O-T-O-T-Y-P-E, prototype. A prototype is an invention, but it's the first version. Sometimes we say the beta, B-E-T-A, the Latin character, the beta, the beta test, the prototype. It's the test version of this technology. And the prototype, do they sell the prototype at the store? No, no. It's just for research and, you know, they might give it to some people, give it a try, and then we try it, and then we give them our feedback. So MIT has developed a prototype Conversational coach and AI, artificial intelligence device that will help you with your conversation skills. I'm an English coach. There's a football coach. Now they have a conversational coach, but it's not a person. It's a technology. It's a device. Listen again. MIT has developed a prototype conversational coach that takes the form of a wearable that takes the form of something that looks like something so I have a bottle opener you know coca-cola bottle I have a bottle opener but the bottle opener the shape is like a glass it looks like a glass of beer and then you can open a bottle of beer so this is the idea Okay, so it takes the form of a glass. I have a bottle opener that takes the form of a glass. Okay, this is the idea. Um, what else do I have? Other examples. I have a whistle. Hold on a second, I'll show you. If you're watching live on Facebook. I have a whistle. This is a whistle. Okay, but does it look like a whistle? No, this whistle looks like a cow. So this whistle takes the form of a cow. Yeah, it looks like a cow. So they have a this prototype, this conversational coach prototype takes the form of a wearable. Wearable, W-E-A-R-A-B-L-E. A wearable would be technology you can wear. So Google Glass, Google Glass with the camera, okay, the computer, or the iWatch, the Apple iWatch, I don't have one. You can wear that technology. It's like a watch or like glasses. So this MIT technology is in the form of a watch. It's a wearable. You can strap, put on your wrist. So to strap to your wrist, this is your wrist between your hand and your arm, that joint, you can strap it on with the watch straps. You can hook it up to your arm like a watch. You can strap it to your wrist. Listen to the sentence. MIT has developed a prototype conversational coach that takes the form of a wearable you can strap to your wrist. A watch. W-A-T-C-H, just like a clock is on the wall, a watch is on your wrist, a watch that will watch your every word. This watch actually doesn't watch your every word, every word you say, it listens to every word you say. Now they have a watch that will listen to every word you say. But it sounds funny to say a watch that will watch 
every word you say. Sounds like Kit. This technology sounds like Kit. K-I-T-T. -T. Kit. Night Industry 2000. This is from the 1980s, the television show, the Kit Car. Hello, Michael. Michael, where are you going? It's from the show Knight Rider. It's a Knight Rider. It was one of the greatest television shows in the 1980s. So you can look up Knight Rider, K-N-I-G-H-T, Knight Rider, R-I-D-E-R. -E Kit, Kit Car. Look it up on YouTube. Great. Right, Kit? Right? You're talking to Kit. And then you hear Kit's voice. It's that electronic computer voice. And Kit says, there's no reason for increased volume. There's no reason for you to shout. There's no reason for you to shout, to increase your volume, to yell. I am scanning your interrogatives quite satisfactorily. I am hearing your questions very clearly. One more time. I am scanning, I am hearing your interrogatives, your questions quite satisfactorily very clearly and yes that's what the story is so we have some great vocabulary listen carefully a bore b-o-r-e are you a bore yeah is your teacher a bore i hope not real time real time real dash time real time as something happens as something takes place that's very old uh, zap, Z-A-P, an electric z impulse, a shock, S-H-O-C-K, a jolt, z z z that's the idea. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a wonderful university in America. Prototype, prototype is a, a sample of a product before they make the final product. So it's a test product and it's for showing people they don't sell a prototype. Prototypes are not sold. They don't give prototypes to companies. Only It's usually only for research, a prototype. P-R-O-T-O-T-Y-P-E. Takes the form of, takes the form of a great expression that means Looks like, looks like, it looks like. A wearable, wearable, W-E-A-R-A-B-L-E. -E. A wearable is technology you can wear. Technology you can wear, like Google Glass or the iWatch from Apple. Uh, to strap, to strap to, that means to put on, to tie on and the perfect idea is a watch you have a watch that has the face of the watch the round part and then two straps the one strap and the other strap and you put the straps together and you put on your watch so to strap can be a verb wrist w-r-i-s-t that is the joint between your hand and your forearm your arm Kit, actually the spelling is K-I-T-T, -T. that's the car from the very famous 1980s television show called Night Rider. Kit, Night Industry 2000. Scanning, S-C-A-N-N-I-N-G, scanning means watching or listening, hearing, sensing. Interrogatives, interrogatives, I-N-T-E-R-R-O-G-A-T-I-V-E-S, questions, quite, Q-U-I-T-E, satisfactorily, and let me spell it, S-A-T-I-S-F-A-C-T-O-R-I-L-Y, satisfactorily, which quite satisfactorily simply means very nicely without any problems.
really cool technology. I love this stuff. And uh, I think it would be very useful. It measures your ability to have a conversation. If you're too boring, it will tell you. If you're too loud, it will tell you. If you're talking too much, like me, it will tell you. Let's listen to the story one more time. I'm going to say it fast. Enjoy. Watch what you say. Are you a bore? <laughs> Maybe. Have you ever had a conversation with a boring person? <laughs> sure. What if there was a way that people could find out how they were doing in their conversational skills real time? Talking too much? Zap. Too boring? Zap. MIT has developed a prototype conversational coach that takes the form of a wearable you can strap to your wrist. A watch that will watch your every word. Sounds like Kit. Right, Kit? Right? There's no reason for increased volume. I am scanning your interrogatives quite satisfactorily. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Did you watch Knight Rider when you were a kid? Oh, I loved it. But that show was tough on Kit. Of course, Kit is the car. Every season, the show would destroy anywhere from four to nine cars. The car was a specially designed Trans Am made by the GM Car Company. Each car for the TV show was purchased for one dollar. Wow, one dollar, I'll take two. <laughs> but the value in advertising, millions. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. One dollar for the car? Oh my God, boy, I remember in the 1980s, the Trans Am car from GM was really popular and the reason was Kit the car in Knight Rider yeah, it was so cool and they, they only paid a dollar for each car Wow I wish I could have one for a dollar <laughs> all right let's get into some questions huh Okay, so this is the Q&A section, and I want to remind everybody, especially the Spanish speakers, I have a new video on Coach Shane's ESL that tells you the difference between the J and the Y. Lots of students have been confused, but my video should make it pretty simple, so be sure to watch that video. It's uh, one of the new videos, so check it out. Uh, Lamb Little. Lamb Little has a question. The course she took. Course, C-O-U-R-S-E. She, S-H-E. The course she took was easy. So I guess she was a college student and she registered for a class and it was easy. The course she took was easy. So the question is, course she. Can we cancel the S in course? Ah, oh, good question. So let's say it fast. I'll say it slow. The course she took. Now I'll say it fast. The course she took. The course she took. The course she took. What happened to the S? Do we cancel the S? Okay, so what I tell students to do in this case is mm, not really cancel. The S in course and the SH in she, those are similar sounds. They're part of the S family. The S, the Z, the SH, the CH, the ZH. These are very similar sounds. So when we have similar sounds next to each other, you should put those sounds together. 
And I like to say, use the 2080 rule, which means the first sound, 20%. The second sound, 80%. So course S, 20%. She, SH, 80%. Course she, course she, course she. So a little bit of S and a lot of SH. Now, the faster we say it, 2080 becomes 1981, 1585, 1090, 199. Can we cancel? Um, I don't like to say cancel because as the native English speaker, we probably in our head, we do not cancel. But can you hear the S? Gosh, not really. It's like 99% SH and only 1% S. So the simple answer, you really put them together, focus on the second sound. The course she took, 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 the course she took was easy. The course she took was easy. Yeah, it sounds like it's canceled, but I'm not gonna say the word cancel. Put it together. 1% S, 99% she. Okay, thanks for the question, Lamb Little. Next question from Abdo Ali, S-U-N and S-O-N. Do they sound the same? Yes, they do, Abdo. They are homonyms. They sound exactly the same. The sun got sunburned. Yeah, the sun was burned by the sun. Sounds the same. On uh, another question here. This is uh, Kayaki. Kayaki. I hope my pronunciation is right. Kayaki. I believe from Brazil. Uh, he says. Kayaki says, "You are the best couch ever." Wow. Um, thank you. You know, uh, I always sit in a chair um, and I do have a couch. And my couch is pretty nice. Couch, C-O-U-C-H. I love my couch. Uh, but for you to tell me that I am the best couch ever, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. I'm almost... Crying. Kaikia, I think you meant coach. Coach. C O C O A C H. Not couch. Couch is something you sit on. Coach is me. <laughs> okay, another question. This is from Omo. Uh, the word with W I D T H. W I D T H. What happens to the D pronunciation? With another great question. And this is the same as course she. So the D and the TH are similar sounds. So we should combine those sounds. And again, it should be 2080. With. So I'm going to do the D. And listen carefully. You should hear my stop D. Wid, d, 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 wid, wid, wid. And then I'm going to slide my teeth down between my teeth for the TH. Wid, 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 wid. Now, the faster we say it, again, it goes from 2080 to 19. 81 to 15, you know, it, it keeps changing like this, okay? It keeps getting faster and faster, eventually 99 to 1. So more TH than the D. Uh, I would not say cancel the D, but yeah, it would get really tough to hear. Another great question, B-E-E-N and B-E-A-N. One more time, B-E-E-N and B-E-A-N. Are they homonyms? Do they sound the same? 
Nyet. No, no, they do not. In American pronunciation, B E E N is a short E. It sounds like Ben, Ben, eh, 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 Ben, 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 Ben. B E A N is a long E, E E. It sounds like E Bean, Bean, Ben, Bean, Ben, Bean. Very different sounds. I'm glad you asked that question. From our on live once again today, I apologize. YouTube live didn't work. I tried many times uh, and it didn't work. I sincerely apologize. But Facebook live worked, which is great. So I'm very happy uh, to be with uh, so many people on Facebook right now. Uh, we have a question from Alexander. Alexander's question: Ah, W's and V's. And Alexander, make sure. You go to my YouTube channel, Coach Shane's ESL. About two weeks ago, I put up a video for W's and V's. So, while, W H I L E, while and vile, V I L E. So, if you're watching live, Alexander, you can see it's big. The difference is big. Whoa, 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 while, while, while. My lips touch nothing. They do not touch the teeth. While, while. Vile. My upper teeth touch my bottom lip. Vile. So the vowel, everything else is the same. While, vile. While, vile. I want you to watch my video watch my video on YouTube and practice that. It's really good. Another question, again, from Russia. Super. Uh, we have uh, Andrew, Andrew, sorry, Andrew Zvoynishnikov. I hope my pronunciation was okay. F-A-T-H-E-R, like in daddy, father, father, F-U-R-T-H-E-R. Further, further. Yeah, this is really different too. It's a good question. So, obviously the ending is the same. Ther, ther. So let's look at the front. Fa, fur. Ah, er. Fa, fur. Father, further. Ah, ah, er, er. It's a huge difference, Andrew. You need to practice, get a coach, somebody who can listen to you and help you and get those sounds down. Very different sounds. Thank you for the question. So here's, I'll, I'll do another question here. This is from Velken, Velken Belmont. Record as a noun, as a verb. Okay, so as a verb, R-E-C-O-R-D, record, record, record. And as a noun, Record, record, record. The spelling is the same. The pronunciation is very different. Uh, reimburse. Mm. Yeah, reimburse is a verb. Reimbursement is a noun. So you'll have to think of some more examples for me. But Velkin, uh, record and record absolutely do sound differently. Uh, Mohammed asks B E E N and B E I N G again very different B E E N this is american pronunciation ben 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 B E I N G being being it's uh, e and an ing being ben being how have you been how have you been i'm being silly I'm being silly. Okay? Very, very different sounds. Excellent questions. I hope that I have answered some of your questions. Keep those questions coming in, and uh, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks so much, guys. This week, we had to listen to chapters 54 through 67, Habit 3. Put First Things First, that is the title of the chapter, The Habit, and it's a great chapter. I hope you guys are listening carefully. If you have the book, the printed book, it will help you too. 
So for this chapter, what we what we study is organizing our schedule. Successful people, highly successful people have good organization. Their day, their week, their month, their year, their life, they try to make an organization to everything. They try to organize everything. And the most important thing is to to make this what he calls a time management matrix. Uh, that sounds confusing. So what it is is just make a, a square. On a piece of paper, make a square. And in the middle of a square, make a vertical line, a vertical line up and down, and a horizontal line that's left to right. So now that square has four sections, right? Okay. So in the upper left-hand corner, that section is number one. Next to it, section number two. In the lower left-hand corner, section number three. And in the lower right-hand corner, section number four. So the upper two sections are important things. In the first square, urgent. In the second square, not urgent. So section number one, important and urgent. Section number two, important and not urgent. Okay? Then we go down to the bottom two squares. Section number three is not important, but urgent. And section number four, not important and not urgent. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, what are some examples? Uh, important and urgent. An example would be a deadline. Okay? Or um, there's a, a problem suddenly happens. You know, John is sick and he can't come to work today, and somebody else needs to take his place in a meeting, is very urgent, uh, and it's important, right? But is it your job to worry? Hmm. Now, important, not urgent. What are these things? Lots of things in this area are planning and strategy, building relationships, making plans. They're very important, but they tend not to be very urgent. You have some time. Okay? I hope you're writing this down. In section number three, not important, but urgent. These are the phone calls that you get and the emails that come in. Uh, something seems very, uh, uh, you know, it pops up on, your, on your, your phone or your computer. You check the email. You wasted time. You wasted time. It's not important, but it's boom, it's there, so it feels urgent. And section four, not important and not urgent. Again, this is when we are wasting time, uh, I don't know, making photocopies and extra photocopies and chit-chatting about football and, and surfing on the internet. This type of stuff, uh, it's kind of a waste of time. Time wasting things. So we have four sections, section one, section two, section three, section four. Now, if you focus on section three, section four, your life will be miserable. You'll probably lose jobs. You'll probably lose relationships. You will not be happy. And you will always wonder, why? What's going on? I'm a good person. I'm doing the best I can do. Um, it might be because you're focused on sections three and four. So obviously, uh, successful people uh, focus on section one and section two, important things that are urgent and not urgent. So the question is, where should you put your energy? In section one or in section two? And the answer is, put your energy, put your focus, Put your time into section two. 
That's where most of your time should be in section two. Now, of course, you're going to have some time in section one and section three and section four, but you need to organize your schedule to minimize those. You want to fill your schedule as much as possible with section two. This requires leadership. This requires a very good understanding of habit two. Remember, what is habit two? Habit two is begin with the end in mind. So you start a project, but you think about what will happen at the end. What is the ultimate goal? What is the goal at the end? And that's what you need to do here. When you're at work and you start section one activity, what is the end result? Now, it may seem very important and it may seem very urgent, but does the end result actually help anything for you? Probably not. Section two, however, should be very closely related with habit two, with your goals, with the final outcome. This is where your energy needs to go. And this is not easy. So you need to think about your schedule. Now, when you think about your schedule, what you should do is define your role. Who are you and what is your role? So for example, at home, you're a husband or you're a father or you're a son. Um, at school, you're a student. Maybe you're a class president. At work, maybe you're a manager. Maybe you're responsible for research. Maybe training. Maybe new products. Maybe you're the boss. What is your job as a boss? Is your job to manage the people? Or is your job to lead the company? So, and each person, you, will have many different roles, right? So you could have, a, a, for example, me, I'm an English coach. So my role is to teach. But I have several different classes. So I have to, in each class, DDM, I have two different classes that I do. And perf, four different sections that I have to focus on. Then I have these podcasts. Then I have these other videos that I create. But also, you know, I have a business. So I have the management of business, the paying of bills, the email. All these people are emailing. And oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe the amount of work that has to be done. So where is my section two? I believe my section two is the planning, the future, the designing the classes, the sh video shooting, and the podcasting. The email stuff, I wish I could hire somebody to do that. The marketing, I wish I could have somebody do that. The video editing and the podcast editing, that is, it's not a waste of my time, but is it the best use of my time? Not really. Not really. For me, is my job, my role as a teacher, I should be more focused on creating lessons and podcasts. Now, what about my role as a family man, as a husband, as a, as a son? What is my role? Am I writing letters to my mom? Eh, not enough. Should be making some more phone calls. Valentine's Day is coming up. I should do something for my mom. What about for my wife? Am I being a good husband? Am I, you know, taking care of uh, household chores? Am I uh, uh, treating her with respect? Am I providing for the family? Yeah, probably could do more. Yeah, probably, right? What about for myself as an individual? Am I investing in my development, my health? Yeah, I, 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 well, I'm doing pretty good with eating, 
although I could reduce my sugar. Exercise, I was sick for about a week and a half, so I, I didn't get much exercise done. I need to probably do more exercise. Um, when I do my classes, I should be as healthy as possible. So I need to take care of my health. So I have three roles right there. Family man, individual, English coach. And maybe I have other roles. I have to think about this. And you need to think about that too. What roles, R-O-L-E, R-O-L-E, what roles do you have? And in each of those roles, what are your goals? What do you want for yourself, for your company, for your family? What is the end, the end result? Okay, remember, remember you die. It's your funeral. What will your wife say about you? What will your son, daughter say about you? What will your boss, your coworker, your employees say about you? What about yourself physically? How will you look? Will you have been successful? Will you have learned uh, new skills? And will you have been a, a healthy liver? Will you, uh, did you lead a good example in life? So you understand your goals. Now you understand your role. Now you need to go to that matrix. Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, Section 4. Think about the different things, things that you do on a daily basis okay so for me I have to write a podcast I need to uh, write the script I need to find the stories I need to rewrite the script I need to fact check I need to uh, set up these for, for the podcast I do it live so I need to have it working on YouTube I need to have it working on Facebook I need to have it working on Periscope and today I had so many problems it was a waste of my time all I needed to do was host the show but well you know obviously my, my business is so small I don't have the ability to hire somebody but if it were a big company it would be great to hire somebody to do all the technical stuff and it would be nice to hire somebody to help with the script making and then I can sit there and put all my energy and passion into the teaching then I could have somebody take care of the editing now this is a perfect world and I do not live in a perfect world so I have to do everything but now I understand mmm I see yeah so I can put these different tasks in quadrants and I can see where I need to focus so in the future as my business grows now I can see where I need to find people to take over section one section three and section four <laughs> I don't think anybody will take over section four that's just you know wasting time but section one and section three are important Try not to put your time there. And then again, as a husband, as a father, what are your roles? What are your goals? What are your day-to-day -day jobs? And how do those fit? Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, Section 4. Put your energy, put your focus in Section 2. I hope this is making sense. If you listen to the book, hopefully you're kind of understanding. Um, long time organization, we go back to our mission statement, being proactive, writing down our mission. That's actually habit two, too. We define our roles and we work towards our goals. When we organize our weekly schedule, so this is long term, our mission statement, we look at our roles, we look at our goals. But for our weekly, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this schedule, how do we organize our schedule? We start with our role. So as a dad, these are my tasks. So I have a weekly goal. At the end of the week, I want to have achieved this. Now, what are my plans? How am I going to do this? What's the plan? And then I put it in my schedule. As an English teacher, 
my role as an English teacher, what is my goal? My goal is to finish two DDM lessons, one perf lesson, and uh, one LME podcast, five daily easy English videos, five easy English podcasts, two daily dictation lessons, full lessons, one Coach Shane's ESL lesson. Oh my goodness, there's so much for me to do as an English coach. And that's the goal. Now, how do I set the plan? And if I can find somebody to help me, what can I focus on? I need to focus on section two. If I can find someone to help me for section one and section three, life will be good. Okay, do you understand? What about for my personal development? Okay, my role as me, my goals to eat healthy, to exercise every day for 30 minutes. What are my plans? Set my schedule. Focus on quadrant two. Focus on being proactive. Focus on achieving goals. Focus on section two. They call it quadrant two. Quadrant, Q-U-A-D. R A N T quadrant that means section the section it's not easy but it's such an important chapter this is the type of chapter again this is the type of book that should take you several weeks even months to read to reread to practice to sit down to write it's very very important stuff um there's a worksheet that is in the book and you can kind of photocopy it and actually write down your roles, write down your goals, write down your plans and really organize your weekly schedule. Um, I really recommend that you, you do this, that you try this and if you're able to do this, you will be so happy with the results. It's not easy. It takes some discipline, but not that much. We ought to start some sort of club, the uh, Seven Habits Club, and we ought to work together and motivate each other, encourage each other, share with each other what we are doing and how we are doing, share the roles and goals and plans that we have, and this might uh, help keep each other motivated what do you think uh, I'm curious I'm curious do people listen to this uh, book club section I hope so I hope it's not too boring for you guys it better not be boring mm -mm, no way okay our next chapter starts on the audio chapter 68 it's part three the unit is called public victory that's our next assignment. Now, next week, and I'm talking February 15th, Wednesday, I don't know if I'll have a podcast. I might, I might not. I haven't decided. It's my week off. It's a, a review for my DDM and PERF classes. It's the week in review. So I will have many, many live classes with my students, um, and I don't know if I'll have a podcast. But... This gives you a chance, this gives you a chance to go back over habit one, habit two, and habit three, to practice, to think about it, to organize yourself. The next time we get together, it will be for part three, public victory. Okay, this is still not habit number four. Habit number four is think win-win. Uh, public victory is very short. It's very, very short. So there's no excuse for you guys not to be able to listen. So it's a great opportunity to go back over habit one, habit two, habit three. Make sure you understand them. If you have questions, you can ask. Then part three, public victory. Very, very short section. Uh, just a couple chapters. And then uh, at the end of uh, February, we'll get back into habit number four. Okay? Great. That has been ABC, the audio book club for this week. Thanks so much, guys.
There we go. It's time to finish this podcast. Thanks again for listening, everybody. Remember, you can get that audio book for free, www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. One more time, www.audibletrial, A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L, dot com slash L-M-E. L-M-E, Let's Master English. They are my sponsor, and I thank them so much for helping me out and for giving you a chance to get such an excellent book for free. You can keep it forever. Listen to it again and again. Like I said, I have the audiobook and I have the print book and I have read the print book. This is my fourth or fifth time. I don't know. Many, many times. Uh, this is my first time with the audiobook and I love it. When I go on walks, when I wash dishes, uh, when I lay down for a, a rest, I listen to it and it's just fantastic. These things in this audiobook are so important if you want to have a nice, successful life. I'm not joking. It's, you know, there are many definitions of success, but the things in this book will help anybody. So get the book. It's absolutely free and uh, it's pretty cool too. Okay, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you so much, everybody. Remember, I would love it if you signed up for my free lessons. DDM is my listening class. Perf is my speaking class. I'll give you eight DDM lessons and then three Perf lessons. Sign up at www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. That also gets you our newsletter. And our newsletter goes out every Tuesday. Again, next week is, I might not have a newsletter because it's my week in review for my students. So, uh, yeah, great time to get the lessons. Great time. Excellent time. Thank you so much, guys. You have a fantastic week. And together, let's master English.